What's going on, little Dale? Little Dale, shoot, that's your name, man. Your name Dale, ain't it? All right, we get praise, esteem, and honor to the Most High Yahuwah. In the name of His Son, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And there they which testified me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I received our honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Allah in you. I come to my Abba's name, you receive me not. Shalom, man. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that come from Allah only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Abba. There is one that accused you, even Moses, to whom you trust. But had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Proverbs 14 and 11. To the house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. That's what we've been looking at. Let's take ourselves back to Ezekiel 38. I think we stopped at verse 8. Ezekiel 30, we'll pick it up at verse 1, start the whole thing over again, I suppose, and run it down in that fashion. And the word of you who came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophecy against him, and say, Thus saith you who are Allahim. Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn you back and put hooks into your jaws and I bring you forth and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields. And all of, and all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia and Libya with them, all of them with the shield and helmet, Gomer of all his bands, the house of Torgamah of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with you. be you prepared. Prepare yourself, you and all your company that are assembled under you, and be you a guard unto them. After many days, you shall be visited. In the latter years, you shall come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people. Against the mountains of Yasharal, which have been always waste, it is forth out of the nations. They shall dwell safely, all of them. So let's pause. We read some of this stuff. He said, in the latter days, you shall come into the land brought back from the sword. Let's take a look at something in Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you the blessing and the curse which I set before you, you shall call them to mind among all the nations where you, who are your Elohim, have driven you. So now he say you'll call to mind. Let's take a take a trip for a moment. Pause. I want to say what it is. The epistle of James, one and one. Also maybe the epistle of Peter, one and one. He say you'll bring these to mind in all the places that you've been scattered. So I just want to set a template for something. That's pretty much it. James. James one and one. James one and one. James, a servant of Allah and of the Lord Yahusha Hamashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Because remember, he's saying all the places that you shalom, man, that you've been driven to. Now, I'm just setting the fact of what's going to go on in the last part. He said you'll bring this stuff to mind in the places where you have been driven to. Let's get another witness from Peter. First Peter one and one. 
And it says, Peter, an apostle of Yahusha HaMashiach to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of Elohim, the Abba, through sanctification of the Ruach, under obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Yahusha HaMashiach, grace unto you, shalom be multiplied. So you remember all these people been scattered. Now, also, we mentioned this the other day. You know why they've been scattered? Because in 2 Kings chapter 17, you know what happened with the house of Yasharal. But see, something coming to my mind in the book of Hosea. So let's swing over here to the book of Hosea. I want to say chapter 2, but it might be chapter 4. I don't think it's either one of them chapters. But we'll figure it out. It's definitely not chapter 2. I'm call what it is. Yeah, Jose chapter four. <clears throat> four and about eleven, I suppose. So we were just talking to the children about idols. It's good for us to know. Matter of fact, make it ten. Four and ten. He said, For they shall eat and not have enough, they shall commit whoredom and shall not increase, because they have left off to take heed to Yahuwah. Pour them in new wine, new wine take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declare unto them, for the Ruach of whoredoms have caused them to err, and they have gone a horn from under the Elohim. They sacrifice upon the tops of mountains and burn incense upon the hills, under oaks and poplars, elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughter shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. I will punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For they themselves are separated with whores and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that do not understand shall fall. Though you, Yasharal, play the harlot, yet let not Yehuda offend and come not unto ye under Gilgal, neither go you up in Pathan, nor swear you who will live. For Yasharal slide back as a backsliding heifer. Now Yehuda will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Now he just sat back and he let you know, son. He told him son strong. He said, I ain't even going to get mad at you. When your uh, daughters commit whoredom and your spouses commit adultery, because that's what they married to. Notice that he wasn't holding the women accountable for the whoredom. He was holding the men accountable for the whoredom because he said, that's how you behave. So for you to understand, I'm going to let your wife do to you what you've been doing to me. Then maybe you'll understand. That's why they say those that don't understand, they going to fall. Because some people are oh, man, why she cheating on? And you wonder why so much whoredom going on amongst our people right now. Because you whore under your God every single solitary day. That's why we mention Molek to the children and mention Janice because they need to know who these deities are so they don't go run off with them. Also, if you remember, the two words for virgin had one character in them every time, and that was that Lamar. Because in order for a young girl to maintain her purity, she has to be taught that. She has to be taught that. That has to be reinforced day in and day out. If it's not reinforced day in and day out, then what makes you think that she's going to remain pure, whether that be spiritually or whether that be naturally? How are they going to remain pure if they're not taught it? You wonder why your daughter's out here popping, locking and dropping and all that old other stuff because they've been taught to be whores. And niggas cool with it, too. You know what I'm saying? Nigga cool with it, too. That junk ain't cool for your daughter to grow up and be no whore. You know what I'm saying? And I mentioned it for a reason. Because what remember we talked about what the law tell you not to do? Not to prostitute your daughter or to make her profane or common. That's why I warn you against the certain stuff that this society push is for was programming for young girls. A, a, a girl who's a Hebrew child shouldn't be taught that she's no princess. You know what I'm saying? That leads to hoarding. You know what I'm talking about? Why does it lead to hoarding? Because she's going to act like a whore. She's going to feel entitled. She's not going to know how to, to interact with a man because she's going to think this man's whole duty in life is to make her happy and to please her every whim. 
And she'll never have the mind to say that I'm here to aid, help, and relieve him and to help him and serve him. And then she's going to feel entitled. She's going to get stubborn. And next thing you know, somebody at the child support office or at the food stamp office talking about I got three kids from three different niggas. You know what I'm saying? And whose fault is that? That's your fault. You know what I'm saying? But on top of that, she ain't supposed to be choosing no nigga no way. You know what I'm talking about? You supposed to already have one earmark. And if ain't one earmark, well, baby, you'll stay here till you're 40, till we get you to somebody. You know what I'm talking about? You don't have that junk like, oh, you 18, get out. Don't send your daughter out here in the world by herself. Because she's going to come back, and you ain't going to be able to kiss her in the mouth. You ain't even want her to kiss you. You know what I'm talking about? Keep your mouth over there, because you've been somewhere. I don't know what you've been doing with it. You know what I'm talking about? That's going to sound rough, but that's reality, though. Y'all know, some of y'all, y'all been on college campuses. You knew what y'all was out there doing, and you know what them young girls was out there doing. You know what I'm talking about? Shoot. Ain't no different than sending them into a regular school. They're going to come back with self-esteem issues. Some of y'all probably had self-esteem issues going to school. Cheering, picking at your clothes, laughing at you, don't want to hang with you. You wondering why they don't want to hang with you. You ain't there to make no friends, nigga. You there to learn. Screw them niggas. But guess what? Don't nobody tell you that. The people just tell you, put some clothes on, go to school. Now you want certain clothes. You ain't want them before till you went to school. You ain't want them shoes till you went to school. You ain't had no problems getting no friends till you went to school. Niggas went to shunning you. Niggas went to picking on you. They picking on you because they feel bad about themselves. They got other stuff, know that. At the end of the day, you go to school to learn, not to make friends and show off. You know, black people are real bad with that. You know what I'm saying? We be quick to want to throw our churn and design the labels of people who don't care nothing about you to impress some other broke niggas. You know what I'm saying? With your child there, come back home, dumb as a box of rocks. You know what I'm talking about? But you don't care. That nigga fresh, though. I'm just, and the reason I mention this is what people love to do. What, well, Especially with the internet. What does the internet love for you to do with your kid first day of school? Take a whole bunch of pictures. Nigga, screw all of that. Nigga, take a picture of that nigga brain and see at the end of the school year, is it some more in his brain than what it was when you son him there? You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I mention that is, and we'll get into it more so, dealing with communism, because you don't even know what you're sending your child to. You're sending them to a house of Satanism. But that's if you know the history behind who started the school system and why they started the school system and what the purpose of it was. And then once you understand that, then you can understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. I ain't just saying that junk because, oh, I don't like these white folks. Oh, no, do the knowledge. Do the history. No, I, I told you the dude name before. Learn about Horace Mann. Learn about all, all this other stuff and where this stuff come from. And then you're going to see what the purpose was. Nothing in the world happens by accident. It is, a, it is a calculated plan for a specific purpose. You know what I'm saying? They don't do nothing by accident. Ain't nobody say, you know what, let's just make it easy on everybody and start schools. No, that's not what they did that for. That's not what they did that for. They did that for the purpose of indoctrination and to communist and satanic ideologies the way your child will grow up and see the state as they parent and themselves or Satan as they God. Period. If you think that they created that stuff to learn for your children to learn, then shoot, you dumber than the child you sent in the school. Nevertheless, back to Ezekiel 38. Bird. Bird, what you, what, what you doing all that for, Bird? I don't understand what that means. What, what are you doing all that for? Aren't you a young man? You are a young man. Cut that whining out. Sit up straight. Cut it out. Sit up straight. Cut it out. Cut it out because you ain't got no reason to be crying. Take a drink of water. Get yourself together. Hey, hey. You want to go stare at the wall? Then I would suggest that you silence yourself. Relax your nerves and let your conscience be free. Back to Deuteronomy 30. That's where I was at. My apologies. Thirty and two. You all right? All right. And shall return unto you who are your Elohim and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you. This day, you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul, that then you who are your Elohim will turn your captivity and have compassion on you and will return and gather you from all the nations whither you who are your Elohim have scattered you. Let's look at this word for scattered. Oh. 
who that is back there? Now that word for scatter is is, is poots or puts. You got pay u and saw. Go ahead and figure that out for yourselves. Pay u and saw. Notice when you're looking at scatter, you got that pay. So he letting you know he got a word in there for you. I gave you a command. I will scatter you. Pay who and saw. No, 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 but it's here. You getting scattered. You ain't getting secured or nothing because he's scattering you. So you have to look at the context. So looking at that context, you either getting chased or you getting hunted because you being scattered. Now you take that, ooh, you sit back and you look together, you got tent peg, nail hook, the ad, join together to secure or means. So we can sit back and see how this word is going to join you together to be hunted. I want you to look at Sunday Sporpus being hunted. I want to say, do I want to say Deuteronomy 32? Or do I want to say Leviticus 26? Hey, come here. Come here. Come over here to Leviticus 26 and then Deuteronomy 32. What's your problem? Why are you crying? Hand down. Chin up. Why are you crying? Sir, he probably went to the bathroom. Do you need to join him to go to the bathroom? No, you don't. Men don't go to the bathroom together. You're a young man. That's why he goes with you. Because you have to be supervised. He doesn't need your supervision to use the bathroom. Y'all will it. He shall return. Go sit down for me, the biggest 26 and 43, I suppose. Is it 26 and 43? I don't want 26 and 43. I want 26 and uh and 28. The biggest. Now he just walked back in the door, so I will wager that your crying should cease. Leviticus 26 and 28. He said, Then will I walk contrary to you. Matter of fact, make that 27. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. I, even I, will chastise you seven times. For your sins, you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughter shall you eat. And I shall destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols and my soul shall abhor you. And I will bring, and I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen and draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Shabbat as long as it lay desolate and you be in your enemies' lands. Even then thou shall the land rest and enjoy her Shabbat. As long as it lie desolate it shall rest because it did not rest in your Shabbat when you dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, will I send a faintness into the hearts and the land of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall with none pursuit. And they shall fall one upon another as it were before a sword, when none pursuit, and you shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and you shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. Now look at what he just stated. Number one, he stated how he would scatter you and that your in Because I've seen a brother who dwell in the land right now. He said, look at the land resting. See, a lot of brews got that misconstrued. The land came, if you in the land, 
then Yah's a liar. If you're saying the land is resting because you're there. Just because the people over there observe the Sabbath, the land is not resting because they're observing the Sabbath. The land is resting because you're not there. Because when you were there, the land didn't rest because you was out there doing whatever you wanted to do. What do you see an example of that in the text of them not allowing the land to rest on the Sabbath? Only It's only one spot I'm referring to because it's hilarious because of his responses back to the people. No, nah, not Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah, he said, man, if y'all just keep the Sabbath, you can stay here. You know, somebody, you know, he made a statement to the people because they wasn't letting the land rest on the Sabbath. He was greasy with it, too. He talked real greasy with it. That's old Nehemiah. You remember what Nehemiah told them people? Oh, you don't remember what Nehemiah told? Shoot, I, I don't need a reason. Come over here to Nehemiah 13. I'll show you what he told the people. You remember what he told the people? He said, I'm putting these hands on you, boy. Put these mitts on you. Come back around here one more time. I got something for you. I, he was talking to everybody. Stranger too. He told me get them niggas in the city too. I put my hands on them too. He told me everybody, specifically the stranger. He said, "Stop coming around here." But the people was around there buying it up. So shoot, they just as guilty. Well, I won't pick this up at man. Nehemiah chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 15. You say you were shocked. No, Trina said she was shocked first time she read that. Sometimes that's what you got to do. He said, in those days, saw in Yehuda some treading wine presses on Shabbat, bringing in sheaves. Lading asses, also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Shabbat, and I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. Now, see, let me tell you, you know, it's a lot of brews there argue. Where does it say you can't buy and sell on the Sabbath? Well, why do you think this man is pissed off? Now, look what they were selling. Not, not only they were getting their crops in, not only was they getting their crops, but then they were getting them together so they could offer. I'm just going to grab a couple words for you here, mainly burdens, so you can see what it say here for burdens. That word for burdens is Messiah, and that's a load. Tribute, burden, lifting. Bringing in a load. Bringing in a nice, nice, nice set of words. Remember, the victuals is that's food, so they were selling their food. He said, there dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of wear and sold on Shabbat unto the sons of Yehuda and in Jerusalem. Let's look at all manner of wear. That boy, that be pissed off. That word for wear is Mekar, and that's merchandise. All manner of merchandise. Same word for sold, that's Makar and that's to sell. So they were selling all manner of merchandise. He said, then I contended with the nobles of Yehuda and said unto them, what evil thing is this that you do in profane Shabbat? Did not your fathers thus and did not our Elohim bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet you bring more wrath upon Yasharal by profaning the Shabbat. Now let's look at profane. The word is kalal, to defile, to desecrate, to make common, to violate, to dishonor. That's what they were doing, dishonoring it. Because guess what you're doing? You were treating his Sabbath like any other day. He said, didn't he already bring evil on us for the same sad cause? And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before Shabbat, I commanded that the gates should be shut. In charge that they should not be open till after Shabbat. Some of my servants said I at the gates that there should be no burden be brought in on Shabbat.
So the merchants and sellers of all kind of wear lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. So then they want to post up that bowl right there. Ain't you got some nuts. You know why they got some nuts? Cause them niggas ain't serious. But guess what he told? Them? Then I testified against them and said unto them, "Why lodge you about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you." And from that time forth, came they no more on Shabbat. You know that why the case? You know if Nehemiah would have stood up and did that, then people would have been right out there and, and been buying and selling right along with them. They would have went right back out there doing it because they ain't had no they ain't had no desire. Look what Nehemiah said. I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and they should come keep the gates to sanctify the Shabbat. Remember me, O my Elohim, concerning this also and spare me according to the greatness of your mercy. Now, just on this simple fact that you can see right here that the, the Sabbath is a very serious matter to you, because that's the day that he is set apart for his honor and esteem. You know what I'm saying? Contrary to what most brews believe, it's not a day for you to lay around and sleep and, and, and slob and do absolutely nothing because you can sleep on any other day. It's a day for him that's sanctified for him and he's serious about it. You know what I'm saying? But they were like this here. I told you, man, you can read in the text why well, people didn't keep that law for an extended period of time. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why dudes act like we kept the law from the time we came out of Egypt. Oh, no. Them niggas were fucking ASAP. You know what I'm saying? They went numerous generations where nobody kept the Sabbath. They kept numerous generations where nobody observed the feast. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the small stuff. Because you already know if they ain't doing that, then guess what else they ain't doing? That means guess what? They were knocking each other wives down because Jeremiah told you about it. You know they were worshiping idols. They ain't get up out of Egypt. They ain't even got an Egypt too good and they were already worshiping the idol. The reason why I mention all this here is to stop romanticizing and fantasizing that you just have such a long, illustrious history of righteousness when it comes to this people. This book does not bear witness to that. This people has been stubborn and stiff neck and unbelieving from the jump. They ain't waste no time. They don't even give you the period of time from the time they came out of Egypt to the time they made that golden calf. They couldn't even wait long enough for this man to go get the laws before they sat down or even get the covenant before they sat down and made an idol. And then when they made the idol, what did they turn around and do? Eat, drink, and play. You know what I'm saying? And when you just take a step back and look at our people, that's what we love to do. Like some people look at it, you know, it's not a big deal with them holidays. It's about family. No, nah, it is a big I ain't going, I don't care who's around there, man. I really don't care. I don't care who's around there. That junk ain't that serious. You know what I'm saying? It's not that serious. If people love you and care about you, then they will come and meet you at where you at. If you have to come, and, the, and this is why your people don't respect what you're talking about, because you'll make the little snafus and provisions to satisfy them. I know you don't celebrate Christmas. Just come around here on the 22nd. Or come around here later on after we open the gifts. Hell no, I ain't coming around here. You see what Nehemiah had to do? He had to post up, because if he wouldn't have posted up and took that stance, they would have kept on coming. And you know why they would have kept on coming? Because wouldn't nobody stand up and tell them, well, we're not on that. I'm not with it. Don't come around here with that. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to set yourself apart, you have to set yourself apart. And if you're worried about offending people, then probably you're not fit for the kingdom. Because what did Yahusha tell his apostles to do? When that dude say, you know what, I got to go bury my daddy. What he told him? Let the dead bury the dead. I ain't got no time to be fooled up with you. I don't care who you is. You know what I'm saying? That's if you want people to respect what you own and not ask you on a constant basis to compromise and, and to minimize what type of time you want. You know what I'm saying? Because they will do it. You have to take a staunch stance like, no, I'm not doing that. And I'm just telling you that based off what Nehemiah did. He took a stance. He was serious. Don't come around here. I will put my hands on you. If you come around here one more time, I'm going to bust you upside your head. Now, this was the governor of the land. Now, imagine if another way, it's not a big deal. Y'all can hang out there. Well, if they out there hanging out there and they've been selling, what does that tell the people inside the, inside the city they, they can do? What does that tell them? If the governor don't take it serious enough to tell them to slide, I guess it's cool we can go out there and buy it then. That's why if you're going to be in a position of leadership or authority and you want to make everybody happy, then sell ice cream. Because you're not going to make everybody happy. And when it comes to you, who are, you're going to disappoint people. You got to ask yourself, are you willing to disappoint people or are you willing to disappoint you? Because guess what? Your family will get over it. And if your family cut you off for serving you, you ought to be happy. 
Because what did he tell you to do if people separate th themselves from you, from your company for his name's sake? What did Yahusha tell you to do? He said, that's a blessing. You ought to rejoice. You know what I'm saying? But you know why we don't rejoice? Because you know what they've been telling you? Families, everything, this, that, there, and the third. But what did the Lord tell you? Who is my mother and who is my brother and who is my sister but them that do the will of Elohim? He also told you if you weren't willing to forsake this, this, and this, you couldn't be my disciple. Again, that don't mean you can't fool with your people. But if you allow your people to cause you to profane, compromise, and, and, and dance around for their appeasing over your Elohim, you might as well go back in the world because you're a friend of the world and therefore Elohim will hate you. Because he doesn't want his sons and daughters. They're not going to do that. I've been told you that. When I first came home, man, they were like, oh, yeah, man, such and such around here for Thanksgiving. You come around here? No. They know where I'm at. If they want to see me, they can come around here. Man, half the time, your people don't want to see you no way. They just want to see, can I get you to capitulate to what I want you to do? Because most of y'all people, oh, you still on that Bible stuff? They don't take that stuff seriously. So you got to show them better than you can tell them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not coming around there. I don't care who around there. When your great grandma around there, well, shoot, she better come around here if she want to see me before she die. Because if you think I'm going to come around here while you niggas worshiping another deity, you's a fool. I don't care who around there. What does that mean to me? You have to look at that. People play on your emotions. You know what I'm saying? And they play on that because at the end of the day, 99.9% .9 of the people on this earth hate you who? Period. You know what I'm saying? And you have to have the same mindset that Yahuwah has. If you are the household of Yahuwah and somebody do something to you, what is Yahuwah going to do? He going to straighten them. He said it is a delightful thing for him to bring tribulation to those that trouble you. So how should you feel about somebody who has a problem with the man who you say is your father? Huh, you all right? Yeah, you look like you're trying to process something just then. Look like like the series. Look like you would put three plus three in parentheses times ten. It is though. Like I told you, that don't never mean you can't see your people, but you gotta watch them because people will ask you to compromise. They will ask you to compromise with a straight face and a smile. Like I've been told you this years ago. Like you deal with a woman, if a woman say, you know, most dudes don't take a woman seriously when they say she in the Bible. They don't even take that seriously. Because nigga feel like if I can get you to get on your knees and give me some fellatio, or I can get you to give me some uh some back shots, oh, I'm your God now, nigga. Cause you cause you follow after me. You know what I'm saying? That's how you feel. If I can get you to go the same way a woman gonna feel, if you say this is what you want and I can get you to go against it, she ain't respecting what you're talking about. That's why when you look at the average person, whether male or female, when they're dealing with somebody who in the word and that person will not compromise the word for them, they don't want to fool with you no more. Because at the end of the day, most people want to see what can I get you to go against? Because they're not going to take you seriously. You know what I'm saying? You, We don't be realizing that most people hate you who are and don't take your profession of your faith seriously. And the reason why we don't, they don't take it seriously because we hell bent on still trying to be outside the world, but fit in with the people that you knew before y'all severed you to belong to him. And you have to realize that people are going to be lost along the way. And if you have a problem with that, then you're going to be just like Lot's wife. Remember what he said about Lot's wife? What he said, what Yahushua told you about Lot's wife? Remember, all right? What did she do? She looked back. Because she was worried about what was behind her. You have to be focused on what's in front of you. If the kingdom of Elohim is in front of you, you can't be worried about it. The same way he told you, don't worry about anything you did in Egypt. I done brought you across that over on the other side of this flood. That's over there. This is irrelevant to you now. And all of that is lining up with baptism. When you were immersed, you lived in the deceitfulness of the lust of the flesh and of the world. Now you done came up out of that water. You lived to Elohim. That stuff is behind you now. What does that matter? Who going to die, get resurrected from the dead and say, no, nah, I want to die again? Because that's what happens when we go back to what he done delivered us from. Don't make no sense. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I don't need Deuteronomy 32. Now, I'm talking, and the reason why I mention that, because we talking about getting to the place of having rest. Now, again, this is a half perspective, half understanding. 
Yeah, you could go see your people, but you have to pay attention when your people are asking you to compromise. Even with this season that just passed, you know most of your people turned around and bought Christmas gifts for your churn and felt like, oh, I just wanted to hold it to a day or two after. Nigga, you could have dropped that junk off two, three weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? You could have dropped it off two, three weeks ago. You could have came, been came and brought that over here. You didn't need to wait till December 25th to buy them sun and think I'm stupid. Don't disrespect me like that. Just go get the crap and bring it around here. You know what I'm saying? But you want to still feel like the children are participating in Christmas. Not you, but them. That's how their mindset works. I don't want them to miss Christmas. Nigga, damn Christmas. And every idiot who followed. You know what I'm talking about? They ain't missing nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you have to look at people in the face and explain to them. They're not missing anything. Why do you feel like they're missing something? What is it that they're actually missing? They're just missing the chance to get toys. Toys for what? What does nigga need toys for? Look at this crap right here, man. See this crap, the same type of crap that's on here. Stupid crap that's on here. This junk really say at the bottom, we seen his star in the east and we done came to worship him. That's what these stupid people had going. This is the, this is from the eastern star. This is what's on here. They got a little line right here say lion of the tribe of Judah. Another line that say son of righteousness from Malachi chapter 4. What else they got on here, man? Another one to say the word, open Bible. That's all type of crap that's on here. I see the billboard that said if, if uh that you should if you hung up a Christmas tree, Jesus hung himself on a tree and shed his blood to give gifts to men. Get your stupid butt out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, the gift giving is gifts to Tammuz. That's what they're doing it for. You know what I'm saying? This is for Tammuz. And guess what they get? And the reason why I say this here is why do we say this here? Because what they finna get ready to celebrate what in like February? Lent. And that's the 40 days for the weeping of Tammuz. You know what I'm saying? That's, what, that's all that stuff tied to. The women walked around weeping for Tammuz. And then that's when what Easter come round and Tammuz are resurrected from the dead to go dwell with his mama Ashtaroth. And guess what ain't involved? No man, because it's God is worship all the way around the board. See, you have to know that. See, I'm, I'm the type of nigga that'll do it. I would recommend you would do it. If you want your people to leave you alone, tell them the history about stuff in that great of a detail. I guarantee you they leave you alone. I guarantee you they leave you alone. Instead of saying, I don't celebrate Christmas. See, I don't participate in Saturnalia because see, really what that is, is that's the death of Tammuz, right? See, they hung him on a tree and he died. And see, then you come around here, you want to try to tell me it's a new beginning because it's Janice time. But then see, here come Luke Procalia. When you're around here having sex with wolves and sacrificing people. Now you're weeping for Tammuz because it's Lent. And now y'all want to come around and resurrect him from the dead and dwell with Ashtaroth. That's why I don't bring my children no damn gifts around here. That's why we don't do it. But see, I'm going to leave that nigga alone. You know why people leave you alone? Because you gave them too many facts. And people don't like facts. And they'll leave you alone. I'm telling you that. If you, I'm talking about if you detail and you take the time to learn the information. And you, they can tell that you have a command of the information. People will leave you alone. If you just say, I don't celebrate Christmas. See, people don't believe that. I'm kidding about that, girl. We cooking a Christmas ham. You come around there? Son, you know your granddaddy going to be around there. You know he ain't seen you about three four years. You sit around and tell them, yeah, Tammuz this and Nimrod that and Luke will care you to have sex with dogs. Some people leave you alone. You know why they leave you alone? Because they don't want you to come around the family talking about that stuff. You know what I'm talking about? They'll leave you alone. Hold on. Yeah, he said, the brother said, it's just a family gathering, eating unclean foods, celebrating. See, it ain't even like this. Just tell them what it is. You sit around and you tell them, you know, on Valentine's Day, mama, they got naked and had sex with dogs. Let me show it to you on my phone. Look at the information. I got it right here. Then leave you alone. They stop calling you. You know what I'm talking about? I'm telling you, I used to do that junk to my homeboy up the road all the time. That nigga used to want to come play. I used to pull one of the books out of my locker. Bro, check this out. Hit that nigga with facts. That nigga stopped playing. But now I'm going to mess with you later. I know you is. You got to know how to make people leave you alone. I'm telling you. You ever sat down with your people and just told it to them? Just tell it to them. I bet you they leave you alone. They won't ask you no more. They won't bring it up ever again. They be like, girl, she's kind of crazy. She around here talking about people having sex with dogs and niggas weeping for taboos. I don't even know who taboos is. I don't want to talk to her no more. See, you got to be willing to do that. You got to be willing to do that. You ain't willing to do that. They going to keep fooling with you. You got to tell you got you got to run the history down to them. But the key thing is don't recite it, actually learn it, understand it, have a command of it.
Because when people see you know what you're talking about and they don't know what they're talking about, they will leave you alone. If they feel like you just winging it and regurgitating something, they're going to take it seriously and they're going to keep fooling with you. But when they know you know what you're talking about, oh, they're going to leave you alone. They're going to leave you alone. They ain't gonna fool with you no more. They gonna be like, you know what? She crazy. That that Stanley crazy. I don't know what he talking about. Who is Asteroid? Why she got titties everywhere? What they do there? Is but I mean, if you tell it to him plain and stop trying to spare people feelings, this is if you want people to leave you alone. This is not randomly going around telling people this. This is if you know your people like to attack you about come do this and come do that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go ahead and hit it with it. Gotta go and swap out. Why that man don't buy you nothing for Valentine's Day? Because we don't like to have sex with dogs, mama. That's why. We don't sacrifice children. What you mean? Lupercalia, look it up. Lupercalia, yeah, you know Luper. That's werewolves. You know what I'm talking about? Kale, I'm trying to tell you something. Kale and dogs. They niggas eating kale, eating dogs. We ain't got time for this crap. You know what I'm saying? Find out who Cupid is. Find out who he really is. That's And that's why I tell you. Don't go along with that programming that they teach you because that stuff they put in them children suck. Man, they be trying to shoot you out of worship on the low. Get you out of worship with a different name. I tell you a princess. Princess if you want her. Don't go for that jump. Your daughter be around here stone cold whore. She ain't got to sleep with a whole bunch of people being no whore. Be a stone cold whore. Oh yeah, of course they do. But that's because they don't know the facts though, Monte. That's all. You know, they don't know the facts. You know, some people just look at it as it's tradition. We always do it. Mm -hmm. Some people it's tradition and having to sit in the room and smoke crack. That don't mean you got to go join in. You got people who got family traditions to go out here and rob and kill. Because some tradition don't like to say make you feel better. But when you do that, you act like a woman because that's what women do. Women tell themselves lies to make themselves feel better about stuff they're doing. They know that's wrong. Ain't no man got no business operating like that. That's when you're living in a delusion. I know I should have spoke this crack. What can I tell myself to make myself feel better about doing this? You know what I'm saying? That's that's feminine energy. Men don't operate that. You already know you're wrong. You either just gonna say, I know I'm wrong, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Nevertheless, do the Romney 30, man. I think I'm in verse four. He said, if you be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven from thence, will you who your Allahim gather you, and from thence will he fetch you, and you who will bring you into the land? Land which your fathers possess, and you shall possess it, and he will do you good and multiply you above your fathers. And you who will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love you who your Allahim with all your heart, with all your soul, that you may live. And you who your Allahim will put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate you and which persecuted you. And you shall return and obey the voice of Yahuwah and do all his commands, which I command you this day. So keep point. He said, if you were to you think yourself in return, guess what he said he'll do? He'll circumcise your heart and you see Colossians chapter 2. You know, back in the day, man, what I was, Goody Ma had a song called Fighting, talking about for your spirit and mind. You better believe that you who are fighting for your spirit and mind every day because it's a war out here. Paul done already told you the, car, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal; they spiritual. This war, this world is warring for your soul every single solitary day. Uh, Colossians two and eight, every single solitary day, and you have to protect. And you got to protect your children's soul. That means you might have to protect them from your parents, from your grandparents, from aunties, uncles, and all that. Because at the end of the day, they're not concerned with the salvation of your children's soul because they ain't concerned with their own salvation. So if you know somebody don't care about their own salvation, why would you think they care about yours or your offsprings? And you have to learn to separate. See, that's where you have to learn to separate your emotions from things. You have to separate your emotional tie that you feel like you got to your people to think with a spiritual mind. You can't think that way. This is why the Lord told you that if you're not willing to forsake father or mother or sister or brother, or your own life, you can't be his disciple. How is he going to be able to teach you when you have an attachment to something that will keep you from him? He ain't going to be able to teach you. Because you're always going to you're always gonna be subservient to that. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Mashiach. Now that just pretty much going to what we were just talking about. 
let me get you the Greek word for philosophy here. That I word for philosophy is a love of wisdom. Either a skill or zeal in any art, science, or any branch of knowledge. This were people who busy themselves with refined and speculative inquiries into the nature and classes of angels, into the ritual of Mosaic law and regulations of Jewish tradition respecting practical life. That's what that Greek word means. So basically what you see what a lot of brews doing now, sitting around talking a much ado about nothing. You know, Solomon told you that in the book of Ecclesiastes to be to my son. Be not, he admonished you not to study many books because much studying is wearisome to the flesh. So you have to be careful of that. And then when you look at rudiments of the world, let's look at that Greek word for rudiments and what that means. That Greek word for rudiments means uh, the elements from which things have come, the material causes of the universe, the heavenly bodies, Fundamental principles of any art, science, or discipline. Let's continue. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Elohim bodily, Elohim head bodily. You are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, for whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Amashiach, buried with him in immersion. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of Elohim, who have raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, have you quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. So when he's telling you in Deuteronomy, I'll circumcise you in the heart of your seed, he's telling you by how you'll be immersed, put off the body of sins, and be raised according to the faith of Elohim, the lid of Yahuwah. You're not going to be able to enter into that land if you don't do that. And that's the point of what I'm making. In Leviticus 20, he said, I severed you from amongst other people that you can be mine. So if you take the time to say that I will be baptized in the name of Yahushua in the likeness of his death, you're saying I seek to be severed from other people to belong unto Yahuwah. That means you can no longer live your life to try to please, appease, or seek to do the will of people who don't serve Yahuwah if it's going to cause you to profane and defile what he has told you to do. And you have to be willing to do that. Now, I know that's probably harder for women to do than men. You know what I'm saying? Just because of the emotional nature of a woman, especially you get attached to people. That's a woman's nature because they're emotional. You know, for me, it was like this here. Shoot. You got to go. You got to go. What I think said in Rocky, if he dies, he dies. If you got to go, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? Don't mean it feel great. But at the end of the day, I'll catch you on the back end, buddy, because I can't go to hell with you. And I still feel that way to the day. If you got to go, you got to go. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know what I'm talking about? I can't turn around and compromise what I'm on to, to keep you around. Because if I have, and, that, and that's the thing, right? If you have to compromise what you stand for to please another person, that person's not worth keeping around to begin with. That's even if you ain't dealing with no word. You can't compromise your ideals for the company of other people. Ain't nobody on this earth worth, because once you compromise who you are, then you know what you are. You're a hypocrite. You're an actor. You're a pretender. That's why you shouldn't take nothing serious that any professional actor says. This nigga pray pretend for a living. You'll never know when this nigga's being his real self and when he's not. Because the nigga play. Could you ever tell if Denzel was acting or being phony? Could you be able to tell? That nigga good, ain't it? That nigga is superior at his job. This is a nigga who say he prayed the spirits to play roles. That nigga say I couldn't have played that nigga in glory without praying to the spirits. I'm not going to believe nothing. That nigga say I didn't mind. Not a nigga who say he prayed to spirits. That nigga pulls something up. Just like this here. This is just what they do. They get this junk right here in their house. I'm talking about this right here. Not all the stuff around it, but this just right here. And they call up spirits with it. That's what them niggas do. And they call up spirits with it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why am I doing that? Oh, because I'm using that as an illustration. It's an illustration. Let's come over here. I'm good with Deuteronomy 30. Let's go to Matthew 24. We just had set the stage so that you're going to be delivered out of the lands in the latter time. 
You have to establish that. You can get you what it is. Exodus, I mean, not Exodus, pardon me. My apologies. You can get you Isaiah 26, where he talking about that he'll gather you one by one. You know what I'm saying? You can see that in Isaiah 11. We get Isaiah 11 right now. I done just be rough, man. And the reason why I'm mentioning all that again is Isaiah 11 and uh. Mm. Isaiah 9, I suppose. Isaiah 11. Why I'm mentioning that is, is what we read the other day, last night, I should say, about nobody will enter into that kingdom who sins, how he's going to purge it, that we have to understand that if this is the place that we desire to dwell. All I'm mentioning this for is, is that we have to be fully and wholly committed to Yahuwah in order to receive his rest. You can't be halfway with it. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said anybody. Now, of course, he was speaking to a man who he was telling to go do the labor. But he said any man who stick his hand to the plow looking back is not fit for the kingdom of Elohim. Like once you once you get once that call for that kingdom come, then whatever was behind you, that's where it has to stay. You know what I'm saying? That's where it has to stay because you can't carry that with you. Because all it's going to do is going to weigh on you and it's going to pull you back. You have to sit back. Just sit back and look at it in this aspect. Of all the people that you've known in your entire life, you know what I'm saying? Has it ever ran across your mind? Why you who had decided to open my ear so I could seek after him instead of this person? You know what I'm saying? You know a lot of people. It could have been a lot of people who were sitting around you when you who were called. Why they ain't hear his voice and you did? Then you got to ask yourself, why did you who open, his, open my ear to hear it? For no other reason because he's merciful. So if he took the time to open your ear to hear, then why would you give two dams by anything that was before that? You know what I'm saying? Anything or anyone or any place. Because he could have left you right there where you was at, right there with them, walking around here, doing whatever they were doing. You could have been right there getting your Christmas tree ready. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm just using that because that junk just passed. Getting your, get, getting your Christmas ham all glazed up. You know what I'm talking about? Out here dressed like a whore in front of somebody club. You're cold, shaking, trying to be cute. Letting random niggas jump up all in you. You're running up in random women. You got children from three, four different women. You know what I'm talking about? You're a drunkard. You get high every day. But instead, you serve you who? Why you versus them? Because he opened your ear to it. And if you know that he took that time to do that, then you have to realize, well, shoot, there's a reason. Let me leave that stuff where it's at. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. You can look up the names of the spots, man, but it's the Valley of Hemnam and, and the uh, Valley of Jehoshaphat. What's the name of the other place? No, it was started with a T. I mentioned it last night. Tophet. Yeah, that's what it was. Tophet. Valley of Tophet. Valley of Tophet is mentioned in the book of Joshua. Valley of Hemnam is mentioned in several places, but you have to look up them locations. But you can look up Ezekiel 20 by verse 44 and Isaiah 33 and 14 and Isaiah 66. Specifically, he was asking about well, electronic. It could be, I can't recall. I have to look. But I'm just mentioning it seriously, though. I used to think about that stuff all the time, like shoot, especially when I first started. Like, shoot, look at man, I got homeboy just came home from prison. Some of them boys right back on the same type of time. I got out of prison and what ain't had no time to get on no type of time because the word came. For what purpose? Because you who are merciful. It ain't for nothing that I did. It ain't no righteousness that I possess. So when I see an opportunity so great that, okay, here's an opportunity of salvation. You're going to forsake it because you weren't about family and friends, because you weren't about traditions, because you weren't about hurting the nigga feelings. Shoot, screw you niggas and your feelings. You know what I'm talking about? I got to live forever. I can't go to hell behind you. Like, because I didn't do stuff with my friends before because crime was concerned. To, oh, I don't want that nigga to be mad with me. If that shoot, screw you nigga. You're going to pull that move by yourself. Well, I ain't going to jail with you. You know what I'm saying? That was my mindset anyway. That whatever niggas doing, that's what you doing. You know what I'm saying? For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah, I ain't on that. I ain't, no, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm talking about? So once the word came, well, shoot. If I got to leave you behind, I got to leave you behind. Don't mean I don't love you. Don't mean I don't care about you. You know what I'm saying? But if I got to leave you behind, you just left behind, huh? It just is what it is. Because the book already tell you that. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So you have to keep that in consideration. Isaiah 11 and 8. 
It said, I said 11 and 9, excuse me. He said, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my Kadash mountain. Listen to what he said. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea. Now, keep that in mind, right? We were just talking about Gog and Magog last night, right? And read a little bit starting tonight. Look at what he said. What would be in the earth at that time? The knowledge of Yahuwah would be from the end of one end of the earth to the other, right? Say the knowledge of, of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea, the earth would be full of it. That's another reason why them people going to be mad. Gog and Magog, all them nations mad. Because the standard that, see, if you don't have a heart for Yahuwah, his standard makes you angry. This is why I say in John 15, they hated me without a cause. All he did was do what the word said. They were, how could you get angry at a man because he healed a blind man on the Sabbath? You mad. You know what I'm saying? You mad. A woman got an issue of blood for 18 years. He healed her. You mad. You catch a woman in adultery. He have mercy and forgiveness on her. You mad. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at that, the knowledge of Yahuwah is not just the laws. They giving the full in. Come on, man. This man gonna be teaching everybody. Pause. Isaiah 16. Isaiah 16. Isaiah 16 and one. Isaiah 16 and one. He say, send you the lamb to the ruler of the lamb from Selah to the wilderness on the mount. Unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the fords of Arnon. Take counsel, execute judgment, make your shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday. Hide the outcast, beray him not that wander. Let my outcast dwell with you. Moab be a covert to them from the face of the spoiler, for the extortioner is at an end, the spoiler cease, the oppressors are consumed out of the land. And in mercy shall the throne be established. He shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging, seeking judgment, and hasting righteousness. And they're going to have a problem with that. Let's look at that word for hasting. Say he's going to be hasting righteousness. That word is Meir. It means quick. Prompt, skilled, ready. He's going to quickly prompt righteousness in the earth. Go back to Isaiah 11. We're in verse 10. It said, In that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for ensign of the people. It to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand a second time. Again, excuse me, the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamar, and from the islands of the sea. He shall set up an ensign for the nations they, and shall assemble the outcasts of Yasharal and gather together the dispersed of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Yehuda shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Yehuda, and Yehuda shall not vex Ephraim. I go back to what we read in Ezekiel 37 about him being one stick. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil them out of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And Yehuda shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty hand, wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in seven streams, and men shall go over dry shod. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Yasharal in the day that he came up out of the land of Misraim. So because a lot of people wonder, well, how are we going to get over here from the uh, from the other parts that he just told? Him? And you should already know that. And why is he part that sea again? Like when you came up out of Egypt. So, you know, that that's your who who did. It. Everybody know about the crossing of the Red Sea. That's known. That's known. So he's doing the same things over again so the whole world will know that Yahuwah is the living Elohim and Yahuwah the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have returned to gather his people. Back to Ezekiel 38. Well, Matthew 24, my bad. Now we already read in Zechariah 14 last night about the sword going down. We were going to war. What is it? What did it say that the beast would be doing? Killing. 
Matthew chapter 24. Pick it up in verse 21. I want to pick up the part with the sword and then we'll move around. He said, for then shall be great tribulation as such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. So the tribulation is coming from who? It's coming from the beast. They say, who will make war with the beast? And here have power to overcome the saints. So that's why he said to deliver the, the land that was brought back from the sword. That sword being the beast. He said, for there, and he said, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Mashiach, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Mashiachs, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chamber. Believe it not, for as the lightning come out of the east, shine even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For whatsoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from Shamahim, and the powers of Shamahim shall be shaken. Pause. He said they'll be shaken. Get the book of Haggai, chapter 2. I know I said I wanted the word Songs of Solomon in, but I don't know if I'm going work that in right now. It was something else that came to my head, too, but y'all will not remember this. <coughs> I got chapter two. Pick it up at verse one. In the seventh month, in the twenty-first day of the month, came the word of Yahuwah by the prophet Haggai. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shalathiel, governor of Yehuda, and to Yahusha, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first esteem? How do you see it now? Is, not, is it not in your eyes in comparison of it, of, of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith Yahuwah. Be strong, O Yahusha, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, saith Yahuwah, and work. For I am with you, saith Yahuwah of hosts. Remember what Paul told you in 1 Corinthians 15. He said, you know, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. But be strong and do the work. Remember what he said. He said, how many of y'all saw the first house in the first esteem? Well, guess what? You ain't seen the first house in this first esteem. Because you didn't see Yahusha when he rose from the dead. But you're going to see that house upon his return. You who are with it. Let's continue. He said, according to the word that I coveted with you when you came out of Mizraim, so my Ruach remain among you, fear you not. For thus saith you who have hosts, yet once is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with esteem, saith you who have hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith you who have hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith you who have hosts. And in this place will I give shalom, say of Yahuwah of hosts. Now, what did we already read in, in Revelation 21, right? He, what did he say the temple going to be? Say it be the lamb and Yahuwah, right? That's a lot greater glory, glory than the house made out of bricks. A lot greater glory. Than the, and he letting you know that that house is him. Because what did he say he was going to do? Shake the heavens and the earth. Yahushua just told you when you see the heavens and earth shake, what that mean? He on his way. He on his way. Back to Matthew 24. Hey, hey. Your brain gonna hurt now. Your brain gonna hurt. Your brain gonna hurt. 24 and 30. Oh, that's what it was. Daniel chapter 12 is what I wanted. 12 and 1. Come over here to Daniel 12 and 1. That's what it was. Praise the Lamb. Daniel 12 and 1. Y'all brain gonna hurt. If you have a headache, don't cry. They're going to call you Brainiac. You got a brain? If you only had a brain. At that, this is Daniel 12. Huh? At that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince will stand for the children of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as it was never was since there was a nation. 
even to that same time. And at that time shall your people be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Now, why is that important? What did we read last night in Revelation 17? Who are all the people who are going to worship the beast? Everybody's name who's not written in the book. So therefore, the majority of the slain at that time are going to be the people whose name not written in the book. Now, he also says some of the nations are going to be spared because you might see an instance of what happened. What happened with the Roman centurion when, 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 the, when the master got crucified? When the Lord got crucified, what did the Roman centurion say? <laughs> he believed. So you have some of the nation, they'll see this here and say, oh, what I told you to say to Jeremiah, what did Jeremiah 16? He said, the Gentiles going to come and say, truly, our fathers have inherited lives. Let's look at it again one more time. Jeremiah 16. I, I just see that too, like, with them, like, with them serving them that's out of your reign. Yeah. Peacefully, no problem. They gonna see we've been lied to, because he know. Because that's another instance where you see in the Epistle of Hebrews, who can have compassion on them that are ignorant and out of the way. See, that's where a lot of brews get it twisted. Oh, these Christians. A lot of people really don't know. And when I say don't know, see, some niggas think they know Christians pagan. No, they really don't know. They really don't know. Yeah, they may know it's not in the Bible, but they don't know. What they're really participating in. You know what I'm saying? People really don't know the depths of what they're doing. You know what I'm talking about? They don't really know. A lot of people don't really know how much they've been lied to. And I ain't just talking about in regards of Christmas. I'm talking about in society as a whole. You know what I'm saying? 99.9% .9 of everything you think is real history is a lie. You know what I'm talking about? We were talking about this the other day. Yeah, we came over here on slave ships, but what they won't tell you is what we were talking about today. Most of y'all was ruling in Europe, and then when them crackers overtook Europe, they put you out and you came over here. You know what I'm saying? All us saying, come over here from the western coast of Africa. You know what I'm talking about? What now? You really think if we were scattered amongst all nations? We just read what Peter said we were scattered at, right? That's not the western coast of Africa. That's not the western coast of Africa. We were all over the place. You know what I'm talking about? And guess what? You took your wicked mind and you set up governments and authorities and a lot of different places. You know what I'm talking about? And then the people put you out and you worked your way over here. Now, they didn't get 50, 60, 70, 100 million of us and brought us over there. Ain't 100 million people in the west coast of Africa right now. So you expect me to believe three, 400 years ago it was 100 million people there? It's not 100 million people in the western coast of Africa right now. It is though, but 100 million is a lot of people. We talking about that in regards to you took 100 million and still left millions there. That's not even tangible. That's not even tangible. You know what I'm saying? That's not even tangible. Because if you took 100 million, it shouldn't be nobody left there. It shouldn't have been nothing but the lions, tigers, and bears. You know what I'm talking about? That's a lot of people, man. That's a third of the United States population right now. They say it was over, over 200 years. That's what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. You know what I'm saying? But because it's more convenient to say that than to say that, oh, no, nah, y'all was ruling in Europe. Y'all was ruling in Mesopotamia. At all. That's it. Because that's the difference, what he just stated. It's narrative. Versus actual history. That's what they push is narrative. It's narrative. You know what I'm saying? Like a brother, what a brother had just posted, right? Oh, oh brother, brother, I know he was like, all the planets are named after Roman deities. But they're not Roman deities. They're Babylonian Egyptian deities with a different name. You know what I'm saying? That's it. It's just a different name. It's the same deities, just with a different name. You know what I'm saying? Because that's narrative. And you have to understand narrative. That's why I be telling y'all to pay attention to what they tell you and what they show you through that television, through social media, whatever, because it's narrative. You can't believe none of that crap. Just like brother was talking about this here. Like, remember I told you when R. Kelly came, I said something about that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Nigga been knowing for 30 years this nigga was on that. And now all of a sudden it's documentaries and all this type of stuff. And y'all believing it like this is reality? I knew that John couldn't be right. And then they playing this man music on the documentary. Nigga, he got paid for that. But what was the purpose? It was like the brother was breaking down. Per -per he was proverbial Orpheus. 
if you study Orpheus, Orpheus was a dude who had female fans and then the role of Orpheus who turned on him. The same girls who were talking about, oh, he made me wet when I was a little, he nasty pervert. They still let him hit him right now to this day. If he got out of jail right now, all the women who said he was nasty, if he went to singing and say, you want to come on around here? I got the key to the ignition. They say, start him up. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, he in jail. He been in jail. He been in jail. He been in jail for a minute. They done hit a nigga with a cavalcade of charges. That nigga's done. They threw with him. He did his job. He did his job. They threw with him. But like I told you, when I was a jit, I already knew who Pan was. So when I seen the Pied Piper, I said, oh yeah, I'm good. I can't fool this nigga. I know who the, I know who the Pied Piper is. And I ain't know nothing about no word, but I studied a little history around that time. I knew who Pan was. I said, this nigga hit that. But he wasn't doing no sex trafficking. Oh yeah, he mentioned it. But I was saying, but you gotta remember, you know what R. Kelly, R. Kelly is? What is R. Kelly? He's an entertainer. That dog going interview with nothing but entertainment. And you can tell too. I ain't really watching. I just actually seen it like a, last week. Oh, that nigga was entertaining. You know what I'm saying? I just want to see my kid. That nigga, that nigga capping, man. That wasn't no different than what Tyrese was doing. What more do you want? That nigga was entertaining. These niggas are professional actors. These niggas are professional actors. And you have to realize that they have been sent out there to craft a narrative and a story to push your mind in the Pacific angle. It's mind control, for lack of a better term. Jeremiah 16 and 19. I've been telling you that. Anything you come through come through that TV, you got to look at that with a grain. That ain't no different than with Trump. Brother Otis just said this the other day. You notice don't nothing go down. It's forces that socially disruptive around Christmas time because I need you focusing on spending your money. Soon as Christmas pass, we get right back to the rallies because that's on purpose. That's on purpose. You notice they got the Trump impeachment stuff way out of the way long before Christmas came around. Get you riled up. Oh, we better buy stuff for the economy crash. These people be playing with your brain. They be playing with your brain. And we jump right into it and be defending them. Black people, the only people defend people, defend the defend actors and, and, and rappers and musicians. Like this here nigga, I don't even know who Juice World is. They said that nigga died. He killed himself. That nigga ain't kill himself. Stupid bastard had weed on his plane. I want a nigga try to swallow all them drugs. Go and do that bitch, you dumb bastard. You know what I'm saying? Go and do that bitch. But guess what? You feeling sorry for a nigga who tell your son to be a junkie. I don't feel sorry for this nigga. I don't even know this nigga. Let him burn in hell, you stupid bastard. You shouldn't have been on drugs. You know what I'm talking about? I just seen a whole bunch of women talking about they seen the baby butt naked. They going crazy about a penis. You're a whore. For you to get on the internet and talk about a man's private parts, that means you're a whore. I just talked to my homeboy the other day, man. This nigga was like, yeah, bro. I told my homegirl, I don't believe in oral sex. Bro, she went off on me. I said, bro, do you realize what that woman just said to you, bro? No, nah, what you mean? She just told you I will suck your penis, but you just messed it up. No, no. She talking about your sex life gonna be born. I had to ask. I say, my nigga, what self-respecting woman you know would get on the phone with a man who's not her husband and talk about giving fellatio? I say, you so simple, you couldn't even pick up the cues. You know what I'm talking about? Would any of you women just be on the phone with a random nigga talking about giving fellatio? A male friend at that? You talking about it because you want to do it to him. And you upset because he telling you and he and she kept he like, no, nah, bro, it ain't like that. I said, OK. I said, OK. If you would have told her she with it, she told her, come on around here. I got you right now. You know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, you're going to be around here tossing salads, wondering what happened. But why do people do that? Narrative. People try to put stuff in your head. Try to you got to pay attention to it. Got to pay attention to it. The people be out here trying to get you, trying to get you. You know what I'm saying? That's why you had that woman. You had a whole bunch. I told you that when that happened. I never understood. A whole bunch of people talking about eat the booty like to Talk about putting your mouth on someone's anus. And that you felt cool enough to sing it. And not only sing it by yourself, but sing it to other people. Or have the nerve and audacity to ask someone to do it. This is the type of stuff they own. And that's just what our music. You don't even want to know what the white folks used to be listening to. When I was a jet. But that heavy metal, you don't even want to know they listen to. You know what I'm talking about? Them white folks would be on the top of all type of stuff. All type of weirdo stuff. You know what I'm saying? They program everybody differently. 
They program country music listeners' children differently than they program hip hop listeners. They program R and B listeners differently. They program rock listeners differently. But it's programming nonetheless. And it's to get you to think and to behave in a particular type of way. And what does it end up causing you to do? Separate yourself from your hood. And at the end of the day, that's all Satan wants. That's all he wants. Did it not say that this man is went into the earth with great wrath, knowing he had but a short time, and that he's going through through the earth looking to who he can deceive? And you think he's playing with him? I seen the white dude the other day. He like this. I love America. You bet I never talk bad about it. Well, I guess you hate Yahuwah then, but you say you love Jesus though. Y'all remember what Obama pastor said, man? You remember what Obama pastor said? Oh, I'll never forget that. Gentleman. Hilarious. That's just hilarious. When Obama, before, when Obama running for president, a nigga pastor got on there. He was quoting Psalms 137. It might have been well, 138, 137, 138, one of them. And it was 137. He was like, you know, he said they're going to take the kids and bash their head against the rocks. You talk about God bless America. He said, God damn America. It's in the Bible, too. It's in the Bible. That's just hilarious. But it was funny because of the fact of the very man that these people say they believe in, he hates the country that you love so dearly. He utterly despises it. And he doesn't despise it because it's Caucasians running it. He despises it because it's a den of iniquity that's built upon blood. That sin is promoted and extolled. That's why he hates it. Nevertheless, Jeremiah 16 and 19. He said, oh, Yahuwah, my strength, my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall surely say, surely our fathers have inherited lies and things wherewith there is no profit. Shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is Yahuwah. See that going out? He said they're going to know his name and his might. So when Yahuwah shall come, because remember what did we read in Isaiah 11? It said the Gentiles are going to come to his rest, and that rest going to, well, they're going to see and say, you know what? Yeah. Same way he said, I'm going to sanctify you in the sight of the heathen. They're going to know. They say, yeah, but we don't hear. These, these bold faith lies. These bold faith lies. Balaam ain't real. You know what I'm saying? Pure ain't real. Tamar's ain't, Tammuz ain't real. Horus and Osiris ain't real. And what you got all these black folks out here? You need to return to your African spiritual roots. Nigga, get out my face. What tribe of Africa you from, you dumb nigga? You nigga just pick up some sunker. They put African in front of them. Because each African tribe have a different spiritual belief. So which African tribe you part of to grab what hold of belief? Nigga, your people came from Europe. Nigga, you came from Scotland. You niggas wasn't following that, you dumb bastard. You don't even know where your people came from. Your people might have already been over here. But you African. So now you want to do hoodoo and voodoo and all this all the type of stuff. You big dummy. You know what I'm talking about? Ezekiel 38. No, I need to finish this. It's Matthew 24 and 30. But you know why black people do that? I've seen black people like this here. I ain't going to celebrate Christmas, but I'm going to keep Kwan. You might as well kept Christmas, nigga. Indeed. Absolutely. That's Zechariah 823. For real, though, you're going to trade one man-made holiday for another. You don't keep Christmas because white people made it up, but you don't keep Kwanzaa because a nigga 1971 made it up. Y'all know what Kwanzaa is, don't you? You familiar with it? That's what they be doing. With, and they have a little different different African sayings. Coochie something, self-determination. Man, get out of my face. You know what I'm saying? I ain't. Get a gift. Nigga doing a bootleg Hanukkah. You know what I'm talking about? Just wearing some doggone kente print on their dashiki. Feeling extra African. You know what I'm talking about? Soon as Kwanzaa are over, they back to being American. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I mean, some people celebrate. I don't do ask me that the other day. You celebrate Hunter? I'm like, no. Never have. Don't plan on doing it. Jesus did it, so you think. It said the feast of dedication. I can show you the feast of dedication of Chronicles. Which feast of dedication was it? Huh? Because we can show you the feast of dedication tied in with Tabernacles with Solomon. So which one are you talking about? I'm good. I ain't finna sit like this here. They went and grabbed it. I'm good. I say they did it. Who ain't standing? I'm straight. I'm good on that. I ain't mad at nobody who do it. Because some people, how to fake, they got nine candles. Oh, it's had seven. That's your baby, man. I'm, I'm good, baby. Do your thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't knock nobody. You, it's in the pocket for very well then, brother. Very well. You know what I mean? Do your thing. 
I ain't knocking you. I ain't saying nothing bad about you. I just, I ain't on that. That'd be their first thing. Jesus did it. 1022 John. He did it. <laughs> Real though. You know that would have been like to say. You keep feet to get occasion. Jesus did it. John 1022. I'm like, all right, brother. He did it. You show him Second Chronicles chapter 6. They'd be like this here. I, I didn't know that was in there. I bet you did. Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great esteem. And he shall send his Malachim with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. That's what we see back in Ezekiel 38. Let's return. We just had to set all that up, that we have been gathered back from the sword. That was necessary. We already read where he said in Leviticus 26 that the land would be laid away. There you go, boy. I see you, boy. That boy done popped up over, boy. What's going on with you, boy? I know I got to mess with you, man. It's all good. We got to get you some wheels, man. You're doing your dirty out here. Let's look at verse 9 in Ezekiel 38. So again, so pause. We've established the fact that we'll be gathered, we'll be in the land, and we'll be dwelling safely. So that's why we went through everything that we went through because that needed to be established. That needed to be known. That needed to be understood. Look at verse 9. You shall ascend and come like a storm and you shall be like a cloud to cover the land, you and all your bands and many people with you. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into your mind and you shall think an evil thought and you shall say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest and that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates. So let's pause and let's go to Revelation chapter 20 of where this story is referenced briefly, but it's really told in detail in, uh, in Ezekiel. Revelation 20 and 4. Look, damn! What's up, <laughs> Boy, they taped you up, Dale, or you came like that? You came like that, Dale? See, ain't nobody gonna push me back. And it definitely like somebody put a clipper right on it and gave him a fade on the side. That's how they calm down. Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahusha and the word of Elohim which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with a Mashiach a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Baruch and Kadash is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be the priests of Elohim and of Mashiach and shall reign with him a thousand years. Listen to what it says. When a thousand years are expired, Hashatan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now, pause. We read this the other day, but we're going to go get it again for those who may have not heard it who hear now. We have to have a witness of why this text says that this, this man is going to be loosed out of his prison. Isaiah 24. This is an informational purpose, because we just went over this not too long ago. Twenty-four nineteen. <laughs> what that nigga looking ugly back there? The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is exceedingly moved. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and shall fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that Yahuwah shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth, which we read that last night in Revelation 17 and 19. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and they shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. The sun of moon shall be confounded and the sun of shame, 
And when Yahuwah shall reign in Mount Zion in Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. So when he's telling you who is these ancients that he's going to be reigning in front of, that's why he tell you, he say, when you come into the kingdom of heaven and you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the prophets and you yourself will cast out. But notice here in verse 22, somebody shut up in a prison. They're going to be visited after many days. This is Satan. The same way that you've seen in Ezekiel 38, where it said that Gog and Magog will come upon the land of unwalled villages after many days or in the latter time. So are we looking at this for you to understand? Satan does not get judged until after the thousand year reign. Not before. After. Let's continue. Revelation 20 and 7 again. Because you do know that Gog and Magog is not referenced anywhere in the text outside of Ezekiel 38 of participating in anything. And remember, Gog and Magog are Gentile nations. These are the sons of Japheth, and he's bringing the sons of Ham with him. Revelation 20 and 7. And when a thousand years are expired, Hashatan shall be loosed out of his prison. And he shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And when and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints of Baal and the beloved city, and fire came down from Alahim out of Shamahim and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night. So let's swing back to Matthew 25 with a statement that the Lord made. Because the Lord let you know when the when the uh when when Satan hit in there too. We had grabbed Matthew 25 last night, but we ain't finna grab too much of us. 25 and 31. Because Matthew 25 coincides with Revelation 20 as well. Matthew 25 and 31. It says, when the son of man shall come in his esteem and all the Kadash Malachim with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his esteem. And before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided sheep from the goats. So Paul, we just read in Isaiah 16 earlier, right? How he would sit upon his throne, executing judgment and hasting righteousness. Now he just said that now he's sitting upon his throne. Does the book tell you that Yahushua will sit upon his throne and judge anybody upon his return? It's not. Say so the dead of Mashiach shall raise first. first. Then the knowledge of Yahuwah will go through in the earth. But he don't state that he judging anybody upon his return. Because what does Revelation 20 tell you? Y'all know what Revelation 20 by verse 9 tell you about on that? Do you recall? Let's look at it. Matter of fact, let's look at it where it's at in the text. That's just for individual deceit. Let's go to Daniel 7, and then we can read in Revelation 20. We be in remedial because we don't need to read Daniel 7. But some of you may not know where it's located at. So I want you to see where it's at. Seven and nine. Daniel seven and nine. From Daniel seven and nine, Leviticus 19 and, and 29. From Leviticus 19 and 29 to Revelation 20. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let me say this here. We're in Daniel seven and nine, Leviticus 19 and 29, Revelation 1 and 14. Then Revelation 20. And those are just for points. It said, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. Why do you say till the thrones were cast down? Because what did we just read? I said, go ahead. Huh? That's the nations. That's what we read in Isaiah 24. I cast the host of the house. I'm casting them down. Taking all their kingdoms. That's why you see him having a crime. If y'all recall, when King David was on the earth, what was he going around doing? He was casting, and he was actually expanding our borders. Because when he was going to war, he was taking these people's lands. You know what I'm saying? And expanding our borders. And he actually had a crown on his head showing that he was ruler over all that area. And I beheld well, we don't, yeah, well, well, never mind. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came from before him. 
thousands, thousands ministered unto him. Ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. And I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. So Daniel already telling you that he see the beast burning in the lake. But he also seen the books open. That means the judgment is coming when the books are open. Leviticus 19, 29. That might be 31. We could get it Leviticus 19 and 30. Leviticus 19 and 30. You shall keep my Shabbat and reverence my sanctuary. I am Yahuwah. Regard them, not them that have familiar ruachs. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. You shall rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear your Elohim. I am Yahuwah. We don't need Revelation 1. Y'all know Revelation 1 said that Yahushua's head looked like, a, like pure wool. White. The same thing that you've seen in Daniel. Come to Revelation 20. We might not get everything today. We take it step by step, verse by verse, if we had to. 20 and 11. I said verse 9, but it was verse 11. Revelation 20 and 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. So pause. Now that's going to allow me to work that back in. Swing back to Genesis 8 and 22. That we read that to the children. Now, why does it say when Yahushua sit on his throne that the heaven and the earth flee from his face and there was no place found for him? Why does it say that? Does anybody have any idea? Genesis 8 and 22, by the way. The new heaven and the new urban. That's where it started at, on the day of judgment. That also lets you know that when Yahushua returned, that the new heaven and new earth wasn't implemented yet. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't implemented yet. That's the still the same heaven and same earth. The righteous, the righteous going to be with him in the same heaven and earth and be with him in the new heaven and new earth. But the day that he sits on that throne, which we read in Isaiah chapter 16, is the day that the heaven and earth flee away. The heaven and earth don't flee away till he sit on that throne and them books is open. Reason being, this is when the wicked are removed. But the new heaven and new earth don't come till he sit on that throne. New heaven and new earth don't come upon his return. Yeah, the heavens going to roll up like a scroll. But remember what we read in Job? That he got that cover in his throne. So he peeling that back so you can see his throne. But it's the same heaven and same earth from the day of creation. Because, because remember what he said in Revelation 21. I make all things new. So for those who get a, 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 a tabernacle from heaven, you don't get, you're not going to dwell on that same heaven and same earth. Because that heaven and that earth are incorruptible undefiled because Yahuwah himself is going to be there with us. Genesis 8 and 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So he said while the earth remains. So remember, it'll still be day and heat because what, what, what promise did Yahuwah make to the nations that wouldn't come up during the Feast of Tabernacles? It wasn't going to be no rain. So that means it's still seed time and harvest. You know what I'm talking about? That means it's still day and night. That means it's still summer and winter. Oh, no. Then the Mashiach arrived first. He ain't judging nobody during the thousand year reign. If he judged anybody for the thousand year reign, that means Satan would have to be judged and Gog and, Gog and Magog don't rise up. Because the only people who get judged before the during the thousand year reign are the beasts and the false prophets. Because they in the lake. You know what I'm saying? The nations just get slaughtered. But the earth still hasn't given up her dead. And this, that, there, and the third, except those 
who died in Amasya. To set it up. And the beast. Clean, clean the world up. Get it right. Let my people be at rest. Let them chill. Let them hang out with me. You know what I mean? We doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. It's lovely. It's lovely. I got to. I can't let you. you the, the father in heaven, like they say, I can't. I can't let Buddy run run the game like that. Cause see, then people gonna be thinking I'm phony and I'm flawed, and I can't have that. Yeah, no, I can't have that. And then that reflect on me like I'm a buster. Now, and on top of that, it's in violation of Isaiah 42 and 8 because this man said he Elohim, and the serpent gave him his power. And he said, I am Yahuwah. I give not my praise to graven images. He ain't finna let that. Oh, no. Oh, no. He said, I can't let that happen, cuz. I got to come through let you know I am Yahuwah. Find you somebody to play with. And remember, the beast done deceived the whole world. So, you know, these Gentiles are already readily deceived. So that's why they're going to pop up and say, oh, yeah, we inherited live, boy. They passed down live to us. Well, I can't even believe this here, man. It's going to be a lot of bruise like that, too. Oh, nigga, but the Antichrist, prophecy fulfilling. Stupid nigga, you don't know. The, if you don't know the Lord, you don't know no prophecy. Period. That's for any Hebrew walking the earth. If you don't know the Lord, you don't know no prophecy. Because the book say the testimony of Yahusha is the Ruach of prophecy. So if you don't have a testimony of Yahusha, then you don't have a breath of prophecy. So therefore, you can't determine or decipher no prophecy. Period. And that's not because that's how I feel. That's what the book say. He said the testimony of Yahusha is the Ruach of prophecy. So how you got how you understand prophecy, but you don't know the Lord? That's why people got you thinking Gog and Magog is going to happen. That's World War Three, and it's that then the thought. No, you, my son, my friend, lack understanding. I'm not going to call you a dummy. You lack understanding. You know what I'm saying? Because you putting you putting time places and places of things that's going to go down. When you can look and see in the book, it's it's very simplistic of what he said, what's going to happen, and when it's going to happen. Like it's not even complex. That's not simple. He like this here. I'm gonna come grab you. These people going to come in a lot of times after you've been delivered. I'm going to kill them. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, research the book. Gog and Magog is not mentioned anywhere in the text of doing anything until you get to Ezekiel. There's somebody in the text that's used as a representative of Gog and Magog because they're a Gentile nation or the sons of Japheth. But Gog and Magog specifically, oh, they're not mentioned. The first time they ever mentioned is in Ezekiel 38. Gog and Magog ain't mentioned with the beast. You know what I'm talking about? We already seen who the beast. Beast got a whole different crew of people running with him. Gog and Magog got the leftovers. It's easy to go grab a Gentile because what did we read? Some of them are going to say our fathers inherited lies. So guess what God going to turn around and do? Man, you can believe this dude. He got the knowledge talking about they the gods and this, that, then the third. Man, you know what our daddies taught us. He right. He right. And they're going to go up there and get their head cracked. As they should. As they should. So when you look at that, right? Day and night will cease. What did he tell you? Did he, did he tell you in Revelation 21 it wouldn't be no day and no night there? Let's look and see. And let's see if that's after new heaven and earth is brought out. Let's look and see. Twenty one and twenty three. Revelation twenty one and twenty three. You should already know from Revelation twenty one and one, a new heaven and new earth is created. It says, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the esteem of Elohim did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. For those who are not aware, let's go look in Isaiah sixty, where the prophets told it to you. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 16, make it 15. Matter of fact, make it 14. Isaiah 60 and 14. Matter of fact, back it up all the way to 11. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Isaiah 60 and 11, ain't gonna hurt nothing. Get all up. Matter of fact, we could make it nine. We get all up. We talking about the same thing. Let you who will be praised. You can see how this stuff play all the way out. Look what he say gonna happen. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse nine. He says, surely the owls will wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish first. So when he says, surely the isles, this is the Gentiles. 
Every time you see ours, Gentiles, this is what we're talking about. He said to bring your sons from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, and to Kadash, one of Yasharal, because he has esteemed you. You can go read Psalm 68 and 29, I believe, where he said they'll bring jewelry or gold to the temple, which is in Jerusalem. The same thing you see in Revelation 21. They're going to bring all their riches. You know why they're going to bring all their riches? You know why they're going to bring? Because it's Yahuwah's to begin with. You ain't doing nothing again. get Yahuwah was here. That's a nerve of people. You think you got stuff here, yours. All the silver, the gold, he already told you that. The silver and the gold is mine. Continue. And the son of the stranger shall build up your walls, and their king shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor I have I had mercy on you. Therefore your gate shall be open continually, which is why you see that what we read in Ezekiel 38, right? No walls, no gates, no bars, no nothing. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto you. The fir tree, the pine tree, the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Because remember, what did he say? The earth was his what? His footstool. That's what he said in Isaiah 66 and 1. If you're not, if I'm not mistaken, Isaiah 66 and 1. He said the earth is his footstool. He said, the sons of them that afflicted you shall come and come bending unto you. What did Yahushua say in Revelation 3 and 9? He said that, that you may know that I have loved you. Why do you think he told you that? And all they that despise you shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet, and they shall call you the city of Yahuwah, the Zion of the Kadash one of Yasharal, whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through you, I will make you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. You shall suck the milk of the Gentiles and suck the breast of kings. And you shall know that I, Yahuwah, am your savior, your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. For brass, I will bring gold. For iron, I will bring silver. For wood, brass, and for stones, iron. I will also make your officers shalom and your exactors righteousness. Violence will shall, no long, shall no more be heard in your land. Wasting nor destruction within your borders, but they shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. That's what we read in Isaiah 11. The sun shall be no more light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto you. For Yahuwah shall be unto you an everlasting light and your Elohim your esteem. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. For Yahuwah shall be your everlasting light and the days of your mourning shall be ended. Because Yahuwah going to be there. That's why, that's why when Yahushua get on the throne, heaven and earth flee away. Because once Yahushua finishes judging, this one, the father come right after that. Let's go back to, uh, I think we got all that. Because of course it ain't going to be no cold and heat. Because it ain't going to be no sun and no moon. Nevertheless, back to Revelation 20. As we can see, and praise be to the Elohim, that the, the timeline is very simple. It's very laid out. It's very specific. You know what I'm saying? Revelation 20 and 11. And I saw a great right throne and him that sat, sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Because remember, he said, blessed are those that are part of the first resurrection. So those who died in Amashiach are a part of that resurrection. Because remember, he said the dead. What did Yahushua say in Matthew 22 and, and John chapter 11? In Matthew 22, he said, know you not that he is not the Elohim of the dead. But he said, I'm the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. He said, whosoever live and believe in me shall never taste death. So you have to know the difference. This is why he said, let the dead bury the dead. And this person don't got me in them. Then you got to let them deal with who they deal with. They all dead. That's why he said, you know uh, what it is? It's the Ruach that quickened it. The flesh profit nothing. If the Ruach's not in you, then you dead. Let's continue. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, 
and they will judge every man according to their work. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So now this is when he's judged. Let's go back to Ezekiel 38. We're in verse 11. We're in verse 12. Ezekiel 38 and 12. He said to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn your hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. We just seen that in Isaiah 60, right? That you would get stuff on your way out and you're coming in. But he also said in the land that is gathered. So this is not before the Lord come back because you're not in the land. Then he says, Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto you, are you come to take a spoil? Are, have you gathered your company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, and to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? Now, we just read about everything that he said the Gentiles would bring us in, in Isaiah 60. Now, we're just going to mention this here. Sheba is a, a son of Cush. This is a descendant of Ham. This is Hamites asking this question. Dedan is also a descendant of Ham, another grandson of Cush. And, and depending on what history you read, you know a lot of people believe that Cush is the one who started the rebellion against Yahuwah to begin with in the land. Y'all do know what people Cush is representative of, right? You know who Cush is? You know who his people is? You know who Cush people is? No, I'm talking about what country specifically or what tribe the Ethiopians but remember Babel hadn't been mixed up by, by that time but he was the son of Nimrod Cush was a Hamite Cush is who Ethiopia used to be called Cush yeah and that's and Cush the Ethiopians used to be called Cush, and then they changed it to Abyssinia and to into Ethiopia now. But it was the land of Cush. So those are quote unquote Ethiopians. Now, whether those are the, the descendants of Cush in that land now, I can't say. I know I knew a brother, he he said that uh the the current the the the, the ancient Egyptians are presently in Sudan, I believe. That's what he said. But I ain't never looked into that, so I can't say that definitively or uh, or negative. He was like, "Yeah, that's what that's the." Uh, and I wouldn't doubt it because we know they ain't in Egypt now. Them Arabs. What it is? Ezekiel thirty-eight and uh and fourteen. He said, "Therefore, son of man, prophecy and say unto God, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, in the day when my people Yasharal dwell safely, shall you not know it." Now listen to what he said. In the what? In the day that my people dwell safely, shall you not know it? So if we're dwelling safely, what has occurred? He done came back. Because if not, Ezekiel 37 is a lie. Isaiah 60 is a lie. And every other prophet who's testified to that is lying. Let's continue. He said, you shall come from your place out of the north parts, you, many people with you, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a great and a mighty army. You shall come up against my people of Yasharal as a cloud to cover the land. Just like you read in Revelation 20, starting at verse 7. It shall be in the latter days. Let's look at that Hebrew word for latter. He letting you know when it's going to happen. Some people say we in the last days right now. OK. Latter in this particular instance, that word is after part, latter time, prophetic for future time. That's all that means. When you see latter days, that means this is in the future. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Because they also told you that in these last days that, that Elohim has spoke to us by Yahusha instead of the prophets. So that was a latter time when Yahusha was on the earth because it was a future time based on what was prophesied of him before he came. He said, I will bring you against my land that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in you, O God, before their eyes. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, 
Are ye he of whom I've spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Yasharal, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring you against them? You know, the first time somebody prophesied of being brought against Yasharal, go look at Numbers 24. You don't remember what, uh, what, what Balaam was prophesying about? Let's go take a look. He wouldn't have prophesied about nations coming against you. And again, this is where they link up with Amalek. Because when we were coming up out of Egypt, were we not chilling and dwelling safely? Let's look at Exodus 17 first, and then we'll go to Numbers 24. Seventeen and eight. Exodus seventeen and eight. He said, Then came Amalek and fought with Yasharal and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Yahusha, Speak unto the children of Yasharal. Moses came and called for the people, and the elders of the people laid before their faces all these words which Yahuwah commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahuwah have spoken, we will do. Moses turned the words. Of the people unto Yahuwah. Yahuwah said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. And Moses told all the words of the people unto Yahuwah. Hold on, my bad. I skipped the whole verse. I'm in chapter 19. 17 and uh and 9, my bad. Then came Amalek and fought with Yasharal and Rephidim. Moses said unto Yahusha, Choose us out, men, and go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow. I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elohim in my hand. So Yahusha did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Yasharal prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side, the other on the other side, until his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Yahushua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Yahuwah said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Yahushua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yahuwah Nisi, for he said, because Yahuwah has sworn that Yahuwah had war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now let me ask you this here. How did Amalek come up to fight against Yasharal. What did he do and how did he do it? Who knows what he did and how he did it? What track he took to go to war with Yasharal? Huh? Any of y'all know? Well, come over here to number 24 and Deuteronomy 25. He came up by the hinder parts and he came up to get the women and the children. That's what Amalek did. He didn't come ahead on and fight the men. He came up behind because, you know, you put the women and children in the back. Keep them furthest away from danger. But come to Deuteronomy 25 and 17 first. We get number 24 in a second. Deuteronomy 25 and 17 first. Remember what Amalek did unto you, by the way. Indeed. When you were come forth out of Misraim. How he met you by the way and smote behind most of you, even all that were feeble behind you, when you were faint and weary, he feared not Allahim. Therefore it shall be when you who are your Allahim have given you rest from all your enemies round about in the land, which who your Allahim give you for an inheritance to possess it, that you shall blot out the remembrance from Amalek from under Shamahim, and you shall not forget it. Now remember now, he said, Are you not the one who the prophets prophesied of? Now, he ain't mentioning Gog and Magog specifically, but Gog and Magog are doing the same thing that Amalek did. 
and he going to block Amalek's name from under heaven, just like he going to block Gog and Magog's name from under heaven. Because when you were at rest, he came and he didn't fear Allahim. Read and read verse 19 again. Therefore, it shall be when you who your Allahim have given you rest from your enemies round about in the land which who your Allahim give thee for an inheritance to possess it. And you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven and you shall not forget it. Numbers 24. <coughs> Twenty-four and fifteen. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, have said, and the man's eyes were open, have said, he have said, which heard the words of Elohim and knew the knowledge of the Most High. We saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter out of rise out of Yasharal and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Yasharal shall do violently. Valiantly, excuse me. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remain of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said Amalek was the first of the nations. But his latter end shall be that he perished forever. Now, we know that Amalek wasn't the first of the nations, but he let you know, son, because you look at first. He's the leader in this in this in this in this regard. He looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said strong is your dwelling place. And you put your nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted until Asher shall carry you away captive. He took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when Elohim do this? And the ship shall come from the coast of Shittim and afflict Ashur and shall afflict Eber, and he shall also perish forever. Y'all know who Eber is, right? Y'all know who Eber is? Johnny, you know who Eber is? Who in here don't know who Eber is? You don't know who Eber is? Eber is one of your ancestors. It's in your bloodline. I'm going to give you the characters for the name in just a second. Do you know who do you know who Eber's son is? Who knows who Eber's son is? Y'all know who Eber's son is. You think you don't know who Eber's son is, but you know who Eber's son is. Eber is uh, where the name Hebrew come from. Because Eber is uh, uh, the, uh, from the Shem is from the progeny of Eber and then Shem Noah then Abraham all the way on down. I guess we'll look at that in a second. Let me get this name. Right. Indeed. Indeed. The name Eber means uh, the region beyond. And that's the great grandson of Shem. The father of Peleg and Jok and Joktan. You got Ie, Bot, and Raj. Remember, they say the region beyond. You know what I'm saying? And remember what Yahushua was doing, walking around claiming this territory, the same way Yahushua son of Nun did it, the same way Abraham did it, the same way I mentioned how David came. Because, you know, Solomon's kingdom was vast. Once he sinned, our kingdom shrunk. Because he allowed them people to take some of them lands back. He, why do you think David was going fighting all them wars? You think he was fighting wars just to fight them? But you got I.E. Bottom Ross, so that's simply to know the son of the highest. Come over here to Genesis chapter 10. 10 and 21. Genesis 10 and 21. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bro, on top of it, he know that's the that's the you know, that's from the seed of Adam right there. That's one of our forefathers. He ain't spoke about a lot, but that's one of our forefathers. That's definitely where the name Hebrew come from. Look at verse 21. He say unto Shem also, because remember, Eber's important because who was uh, who was only left after the flood? Noah's sons. That's why you see the Gentile. Basically, what you're seeing is this. Ham and Japheth is, is ganging up on Shem. Why they ganging up on Shem? Because they already had a problem with Shem. Why would Ham have a problem with Shem? Because he was cursed. Because he liked to look at butt naked men. 
You know what I'm saying? Japheth is mad because what was the uh, the curse for Japheth? He shall dwell in the tents of Shem. You know what I'm talking about? So now you got to dwell in the house of Shem. They don't get to do nothing. That's why he said the owls will come to him. His rest going to be glorious because at the end of the day, they got to serve Shem. He said, under Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam and Asher, Oxfad, Lud and Aram. The children of Aram, Uz. Hul, Gether, and Maj. And Archfab begat Selah, and Selah begat Eber. And under Eber was born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan begat Omad, and Shelif, and Hazarmath, and Jerah. And Hadaram, and Uzal, and Dekla, and Obal, and Abimal, and Ophar, and Havilah, and Joab. These are the sons of Joktah. And the dwelling was from Mesha, as though to Zephar of the Mount of the East. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, their tongues, and their lands, and their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, and their nations. And by these were the nations divided after the flood. So they went to war with Eber, they going to utterly perish. Why they going to utterly perish? Because you're fooling with the people who was at rest in, in Ezekiel 38. You're pulling the same stunt that Amalek pulled, so you got to get crashed. Back to Numbers chapter 24. And it's still tied into the fact that the house of the wicked is overthrown because he's getting rid of. Oh, we good. We don't need a bail and rose up forever and went returning to his place. Back to Ezekiel 38. I got time. I can get back and we might finish this chapter today. And be rolling in Ezekiel 39. You who are willing next week. What we at? Verse 16. Verse 17. Ezekiel 38 and 17. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, are ye whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Yasharal? which prophesied in those days many years that I will bring you against them. It shall come to pass at the same time when God shall come against the land of Yasharal, saith Yahuwah Elohim, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken that surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Yasharal. So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountain shall be thrown down and steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith Yahuwah Elohim. Every man's sword shall be against his brother and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am Yahuwah. See if they didn't get the if they didn't get the message when Yahusha came and did it, now let's look at the difference. What we read in Revelation 20. Let's get Deuteronomy 20 first. Because we about to end. We finished that. Yahuwah willing we're swinging Ezekiel 39 starting on Wednesday. It's still a little talk about Gog and Magog, but y'all willing we're gonna touch it all. What is it? Deuteronomy 20, what I want, man. I think I'm off one verse, off a chapter. Well, I guess I can add Deuteronomy 20 just on the house. It'll go along with it. It's the same type of scheme. We done it had been a while. We'll bring this back to your remembrance. Deuteronomy 20 and 1. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses, chariots, and the people more than you, be not afraid of them. For Yahuwah your Elohim is with you, which brought you up out of the land of Misraim. It shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Here, O Yasharal, you approach this day on the battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not. Do not tremble. Neither be, be terrified because of them. 
For you, who your Elohim is he that go with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. So pause. You don't think they're going to see Gog and Magog, all them people gathering up? Now go back to Revelation 20. Because that's it. Now in the destruction of Gog and Magog, does Yahusha do it or does the Father in Heaven do it? Father in Heaven do it. Because all he got to do is do what? Sit still? He ain't even have to make a move. And we're going to look at that and read it again and prove it. 20 and 7. 20 and 7. Revelation. And when the thousand years are expired, Hashatan shall be loosed out of his prison. He shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle, the number of who is the sand of the sea. So now you see who the hooks that he put in their jaw to bring them back. It was Satan. It was Satan who brought them back. And remember, they had to be brought back because what we've seen in Deuteronomy... What we've seen in numbers, it was already prophesied that I would bring you against them so I could kill you. He said they went up to the breadth of the earth, went up on the breadth of the earth, compassed the camp of the cities about and the beloved city, and fire came down from Allahim out of Shamahi and devoured them. So Yahusha did not devour them. His father in heaven. Because guess what? If you did not believe that Yahusha was the son of Ali and that Yahuwah was the living Ali, I bet you believe it now. Come back to Deuteronomy 20. I bet you believe it now. Let me get the verse that I want. Verse 7. Deuteronomy 20 and 7. Listen to this right here, right? This tied to the to the thousand year reign also. He said, when there's a man that had betrothed a wife and have not taken her, let him go and return into his house, lest he die in battle and another man take. Her. And the officers shall speak further unto the people and they shall say, what man is there that is fearful and faint hearted? Let him go and return unto his house and let his brethren heart faint as well as his heart. Now, he said, if you betrothed to a wife, what he said, let him go do. Let him return to his house lest he die. Somebody else take it, right? Ain't that what it said? Now come over here to Deuteronomy 24, I believe. Let me make sure that's what it is. 24 and 5. Deuteronomy 24 and 5. Now this is not to say that the Lord going to die, but use common sense. He's telling you what it is. He said, when a man have taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. Neither shall he be charged with any business. He shall be free at home for one year and shall cheer up his wife, which he have taken. Now, what did he just say in Deuteronomy? He said, when a man is betrothed to a wife, let him do what? Stay to the house. Don't let him go to war and battle lest he die and somebody else take him. Well, what did Peter, what did Paul tell you we read last night? I betroth you as a chaste virgin to Mashiach. What did we read last night in Revelation 19? Get ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb. So if the law going to be fulfilled, that's why Yahushua don't lift up no finger. So you ain't got to fight that battle. Stay home, cheer up your wife. Let something happen to you, then somebody else got to take it. And this is how you know you who to live in Elohim and Yahushua son. If y'all willing, we alive in that time, you're going to see. Well, I'll be. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The word is true. Because he said if a man is betrothed to a woman, don't let him go to war. He said if a man that took a new wife, let him stay. He said don't be charged with no business. Don't let him go to war. Just stay home and cheer up his wife. Let's get that word for cheer. <laughs> well, it's been a minute since we hit that one. I hadn't used Deuteronomy 20 in a while, but it's been a while since that. But dudes be like, the Lord say we're supposed to take a year off. I said, nigga, that ain't for you. Man. You better get up and go work for that woman, boy. Take a year off. You don't live with your daddy. You live with your daddy, you can take a year off. You ain't staying at your father's house, but you better go get your job, boy. Yeah, <laughs> Stephanie at his daddy's house. He can take a year off. He's staying at his daddy's house. He wait for daddy to come home. I gave him his house back. This my daddy's house. This ain't my house. The word for cheer up, you should know what it is. It's Samak. Make her happy and glad. What the book say in Jeremiah? I get it because I like to read. Jeremiah 30, I believe. 33 and 11. It said to stay home and cheer up the wife, right? That's what it said, right? Make her rejoice and be glad. Jeremiah 33 and 11. Jeremiah 33. I make it 33 and 9. Jeremiah 33 and 9. Praise Allah. Who is good? This mercy endure forever. If you didn't know, now you know. And it shall be, and it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and honor before all the nations of the earth. 
which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. They shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus saith you who again that shall be heard in this place which you shall which you shall which you say shall be desolate without man, without beast, even the cities of Yehuda, in the streets of Jerusalem, that are desolate, without man, without inhabitant, and without beast. The voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that say, Hallelujah of hosts, for Yahuwah is good, for his mercy endure forever, and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of Yahuwah. For I will call to return the captivity of the land is at the first, saith Yahuwah. And thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, again in this place which is desolate, without man and without beast, and all the cities thereof shall be a habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. See, I ain't even grabbed that verses, verses in Songs of Solomon that we mentioned. Y'all will we'll talk about him next week. But he said he'll cause him, cause him to do what? To lie down or to rest. Because he said, didn't did he read Ezekiel 38? That he said, then won't you know that my people at rest? Won't you know it? He said, you gonna know it. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, in the cities of the south, in the lands of Benjamin, in the palace places about Jerusalem, in the cities of Yehuda, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that tell them, say of Yehuda of hosts. Ain't that what he said? He said, they'll do it under the hands of him that tell them. He said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. And they're going to do what he tell them to do. Behold, the days come, say of Yehuda, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Yasharal and to the house of Yehuda. Oh, he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Don't you, and, and if you hear the voice of the joy of the bridegroom, is that not him staying with his wife for a year chin up? That's why you don't see no war or nothing going on. Because remember what I told you. Well, this is long. Matter of fact, I told you. I don't, some of y'all wasn't even there. This was years ago. Now that I think about it. And we never finished that in totality. Yahusha returned. He came as Solomon. He returns as David and then goes back to being Solomon. Because when he came to Solomon, he was a man of peace. There wasn't no war in the land when Yahushua walked the earth the first time. When he returns, he come back as David, and he come back as a warrior, reclaiming the borders, doing exactly what David did. And then after that, he returns to being Solomon, because during the time of Solomon, there was no war in the land. The land was at rest. We had no wars whatsoever during the entire reign of Solomon. Hence his name. You know what I'm talking about? And that's what it's going to be. And that's another reason why Yahushua don't lift up his hand, but his father going to do the crashing for him. So hallelujah for Yahushua and the world. We will start right there for right now. It's all that time for booty, huh? Anybody got any questions? Everybody understood all this? Y'all understood all that? Any of y'all got any questions? Any questions? Lot of leave. Lot of leave. Got leave time. Now Solomon was building now. Prayerfully, everything was very clear, and that you are understanding everything. Uh, there is still, uh, praise the Lamb. It's still more left in Ezekiel 39. Y'all willing to start that next week? Y'all willing? I still come back and bring that song of Solomon one back into the play. We kind of set some stuff up with the new heaven and new earth, and we'll intersperse that in there. I think we stopped at about Ezekiel 41. But like I say, a lot of that stuff in Ezekiel from 41 and 42 are more so temple dimensions and things of that nature. Uh, praise the Lamb. So, uh, and then we'll get all into that because at the end of the day, it's for us to get a crystal clear vision of what it's like it's going to be at the end. You can understand why there's a thousand year reign. You can see that the law bear witness to the thousand year reign. Uh, you can see the fact that it was prophesied of the war that would happen at the end, everything so that when you see things you won't be shaking, you know what it is, your trust remains in you who and you endure to the end so I bless everybody in the house of y'all, name of y'all I appreciate everybody's time, love y'all, stay strong in the faith of Yahuwah, Yahuwah willing, we'll pick it up next week it's right there